Welcome back one more time to the course in really hard accounting. Today, we're going to continue with our theme of accounting for mergers and acquisitions, only from the point of view of the situations where a non-controlling interest is involved. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We once again return to Bob, the president of Parrot Corporation, on his bid to grow the company into a diversified international holding company. With the economy in turmoil and valuations at historic lows, Bob seeks new investment opportunities. The latest target to emerge is EFCO, and Bob believes EFCO represents an attractive business opportunity. The balance sheet for EFCO is presented here. The company has total assets of $480,000 and a net asset book value of $300,000. Bob has negotiated with the EFCO shareholders to acquire 70% of the outstanding shares for $294,000. He has incurred acquisition costs pertaining to due diligence and negotiation for $12,000. So in this deal, Parrot Corporation acquires 70% of the EFCO shares, which is enough to assume voting control over EFCO. EFCO becomes a subsidiary of Parrot Corporation. 30% of EFCO shares, however, have been retained by the vendor. This 30% retained interest is called non-controlling interest. Let's work through the acquisition accounting to understand the implications. All the same purchase price allocation considerations previously discussed are applicable here. It is necessary to determine the fair value of all the recorded and unrecorded assets and liabilities to enable an allocation of the purchase price. Examples of things to look for are listed here. We will leave deferred taxes for now as this can get a little complicated and I want to ensure that you have the consolidation basics under your belt before we get into taxes. From the table presented here, we see that planted equipment have a fair value of $50,000 more than the assets are being carried on the books of EFCO. To account for the acquisition of 70% of the EFCO shares, PICO makes this entry in its books to set up the investment and record the due diligence costs. The calculation of the purchase price discrepancy begins with the purchase price for 70% of the shares acquired. The purchase price is then grossed up to determine the implied value of all the equity. That is 100% of the shares of EFCO. In this case, that would be $420,000. The purchase price discrepancy represents the difference between the implied equity value and the net asset value is reported on the books of EFCO, in this case $300,000, made up of the common shares of $180,000 and retained earnings of $120,000. The resulting purchase price discrepancy is $120,000. The purchase price discrepancy is first allocated to those assets that have fair value different than book values, in this case $50,000 for the plant and equipment. The positive residual of $70,000 represents goodwill. These are often referred to as fair value increments. When it comes time for PICO to consolidate EFCO, it will report 100% of the revenues, expenses, assets, and liabilities. The rationale being that parent corporation controls all of EFCO even though it's only entitled to 70% of its income. But in order for it to report all of the results of EFCO, we need to set up an offsetting credit to represent the 30% entitlement that has been retained by EFCO's previous owners. This is the non-controlling interest, and it's classified as part of the shareholder's equity in parent corporation. At acquisition, non-controlling interest is established using what is called the entity theory which in short suggests that the acquisition of control by parent corporation represents a valid valuation of all the equity 
of the entire entity. Thus, the non-controlling interest is initially set up using the same implied value as was used for PICO's 70% interest. However, if the company is publicly traded, we may have a more accurate value of the non-controlling interest, which may be different than the implied value, in which case we would use that for the shares that we don't own. I'll show you an example of this in another lesson. This is an important distinction. In different countries, in different periods of history, non-controlling interest has been valued on the basis of other accounting theories, such as the parent company extension theory, yielding different results. Let's look at a journal entry to understand what this looks like. To consolidate AFCO at the acquisition date, the journal entry would look as follows. Note that 100% of the asset and liability values are being recorded in the consolidation, not just parent company 70%. Plant and equipment have been recorded at their fair value of $320,000 at the date of acquisition which includes 100% of the fair value increment. Non-controlling interest is recorded as $126,000, as calculated on our previous slide. The value of the non-controlling interest uses the same implied equity value as was used in the PICO acquisition. Finally, goodwill of $70,000 is recognized on the acquisition, representing the positive unallocated purchase price discrepancy. Let's post these entries to perform the consolidation. Let's start with the first column, and the balances reported in parent company at the date of acquisition are simply assumed. This table has been set up somewhat differently than what has been presented in previous modules, but in essence it accomplishes the same thing. You'll learn that in doing consolidations there's more than one way to come to the right answer. In this table we begin with the balance sheet for each of parent corporation and EFCO, as reported for each legal entity. You must remember that legally parent corporation and EFCO are still separate entities and require their own sets of books. The third column records the purchase of the 70% interest, as previously discussed. The consolidation adjustment column is used to affect PICO's acquisition of EFCO. It bumps up the plant and equipment by the 50000 fair value increment. It records the goodwill arising on the acquisition of $70,000. It eliminates the investment account from PICO's books of $294,000. It establishes the non-controlling interest in the consolidated statement for $126,000. And lastly, it eliminates the common shares and retained earnings of EFCO to present a consolidated view of parent corporation and EFCO as if they were one entity. By the time the accountant was finished with explaining the methods in which consolidated financial statements were prepared, Bob's only had one question in mind. Does consolidated financial information present me with decision relevant information? Consolidated financial information has both pros and cons. Consolidating legal entities is intended to represent a common basis of measurement for all the businesses for which the parent company has the ability to exercise managerial control. This enables users to better assess the profitability and cash flow for the entire entity. It also has the advantage of applying the parent's acquisition costs to the financial results giving a more accurate reflection of the returns through the amortization of the purchase price discrepancy. However, the aggregation of information through consolidation is not without certain limitations. It can be more difficult to assess the performance of specific entities, particularly those that are smaller or those that are non-consolidated. Segment disclosures are additional reporting requirements that are used to help users of the financial information evaluate performance of the more significant lines of business within the consolidated entity. Secondly, consolidated financial information may not meet the needs of some users who require non-consolidated information for their purposes. For example, creditors, whom often need financial information for a specific entity within the group, may not be served with the consolidated financial statements. Bob wasn't really sure if that explanation helped or not, but at least the principles of consolidations were starting to make sense. So until next time, don't stop to get to the top, when you get to the top, don't stop.